What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to do an unboxing. Okay, so first up, I got uh, Scorpius Genda Key. Bad news, guys. Bad news. Unfortunately, this guy didn't make it. <coughs> okay, that's some bad news. I spent quite some money on these guys, but this guy didn't make it. But the guy gave me one freebie. So, I'm good with that. I'm not sure what stage it is right now. Probably 4i, I'm guessing. But the rest are fine. I uh, guess I'll stick to three for now. I want to move them into their enclosures. Ooh. And he's drinking water. Okay, so here's something pretty cool. A free Isometris Maculatus. Okay, now here, I've got two Euscorpius Vachani. I'm gonna move them into this enclosure. And these guys are communal. So I'm gonna put them together. He doesn't even like to move. There. Beautiful. Okay. I'm not gonna waste these moss. These are very useful moss for maintaining moisture so I'm just gonna put some in the corner right there spread it out a little bit make it look nice and natural just a little bit I don't need too much I don't want to make the enclosure look too messy okay and there we have it a nice communal enclosure now these guys have a lot of area to move around if you guys are thinking Dude, you placed way too many stuff in here. They can't even move. Well, first of all, this piece of rock right here, they can always climb around. They don't necessarily stay on ground because these guys, they're sort of like a bark scorpion. They stay in all sorts of places as long as it's dark and it's narrow. So I created all these, I made this wood and this uh, rock here to have all these, you know, these creeks and crevices that you can go into and they can crawl around. So they could go over there as well. There's a lot of crevices and creeks and these little narrow gaps they can go into. So actually they've got a lot of place to go to and move around. And there's a big water dish right here. So it's nice and shallow. This is what you're looking for when you want to give a water dish, right? You want to give something that's nice and very shallow, but very accessible. They can come in here from anywhere. And they can even, you know, have a nice walk on these water and they won't drown, that's the best thing. So you want these nice shallow water dishes that they can easily escape from and not get trapped within. Okay, so this next one that I'm about to show you guys is one of the classic in, that's right, it's a desert species, a classic in the scorpion hobby. So, can you guys guess what it is? All right, time's up. Um, these guys are Parabuthus transvalicus, that's right. And because they're pretty dangerous, and although they're not an adult yet, uh, these guys are four instar. Um, although they're not adults yet, they could still be pretty painful. Their stings are gonna be painful. So I'm not gonna be filming the part where I'm gonna uh, get them out and put them in there because I wanna be really extra careful of these guys and make sure they don't run around my house. So I'll see you guys in one second, like literally. Four instar. Parabuthus transvalicus. Very simple uh, setup with uh, wood barks as their hides. Just made some of these little sheds they could go into. They look very fat and healthy. Nothing wrong with them. This one right there is the female and this one right here is the male. And I am not exaggerating. The moment I pull them out of these tissue, I can smell the venom. Like these guys, 
they squirt so much venom, you can actually smell it. They're, even though they're four in star, you can smell a small, a, a slight scent of bitterness. That is the smell of venom. And it doesn't smell too pleasant. And I'm lucky I didn't get stung by any of these for now. I've never gotten stung by a scorpion so far. And I don't ever want to get stung by one, especially one like that. I tried to freaking unbox the frog and it just freaking jumped out and it's right behind my computer, my desktop screen. Right there. Great. Thanks for the 20 minute trouble. There you have it. Polypidates Broeri. They're just so darn nice. Look at that shine. Beautiful. That one just went inside. Here's what I've decided to do with Dead Scorpion. I'm going to turn it into a specimen, preserved in resin. Guys, never should you ever package your animals like this, especially when you're shipping stuff. Okay, so guys, I'm going to have to prioritize these guys first. I'm going to have to unbox these guys uh, quickly. I just opened, because they were all shipped to me separately, okay? So I just, I just opened this box and... I found four of these guys in here in distress and I thought the packaging would be good enough and who knew that the packaging would be such rubbish. Never should you ever, you know, for a day, for like, let's say a short period of time, let's say if the seller is, you know, the seller knows that you're going to be taking it home straight away, then fair enough, this size would be okay because it's a very short term temporary stress, right? But if you know you're going to be shipping the animal for over a day, please. To all of those out there, do not do this. Don't ship your animals like this, because nothing justifies this act. Oh, hey, what's up, buddy? But yeah, please don't do this. Look at how much stress they're in. So I'm going to stop talking, and I bought two pair of these curly-tailed lizards. I'm going to put them inside this enclosure. And you might ask, hey, isn't this your scorpion's enclosure? Well, yeah, this is quite a big one, and it looks pretty tropical. I got a water dish there. I got hides and stuff. So I feel like this might be the perfect setting for these lizards instead of the scorpion so since there's a real tree in there i've decided to give these lizards uh this enclosure and yes you can keep them together absolutely no problems okay so now that i've moved those guys i'm gonna start and record uh these vinegar runes I've never kept these guys, but I this is my first time, but I'm absolutely loving these. I mean, I love the coloration. It's like black to red, and it looks amazing. The claws and everything, wow, these are alien looking creatures. I love them. That's one down. Pretty nice. Got all of them in now. Not sure if you guys know, but these guys can spray acid when they're threatened. Which is why they're called vinegar runes, because once they're in a self-defense mechanism, it starts smelling like vinegar. And the reason why it smells like vinegar is because of these acid spraying tail. So, yeah. I'm trying to do that. There we go. Very nice. Got a big enough enclosure for these guys. Looks pretty nice in here. Pretty nice. Two water dishes, so I make sure that they're, you know, hydrated. Very tropical. Always very humid. So I need to keep the enclosure very humid as well. Thanks for watching this episode. I'll see you guys next time. And remember, do not package your animals like the way that guy just did, that seller just did for me. Never ever do that because it is just not right to stress your animals out like that and it just increases the fatality rate, obviously. And now they're just sunbathing, wonderful. But when these guys are also threatened, they curl their tail up like scorpions.